Hello YouTube, welcome back. It has been six months since my last video upload. Six months, so I wanted to come in here and uh, explain why. And we'll talk about some games as well. Talk about some stuff I've played over the past six months and haven't had a chance to talk about. So a lot has changed. You might have noticed I am in a new place. So I actually moved. I moved to a new town. A lot changed towards the end of last year, the beginning of this year. I, uh, I went back to school, got a new job, and yeah, I moved in all the while having a bit of an existential crisis. Yeah, it's just been very busy. It's been very challenging in a lot of ways. And I miss doing this. I really did. I have some videos planned. I always have videos planned. It's just a matter of uh, actually having time. So yeah, we'll get into some games. But first, I do have one exciting announcement. That is, I've actually started another channel with my good friend Steve. Now, this is kind of where my YouTube journey began in the first place before this channel. Uh, me and my buddy Steve, we used to make gaming videos going back to like 2017, 2016, something like that. That channel never went anywhere, but we always had a great time doing it and making those videos. Uh, you won't find that stuff anymore, but uh, we are making new stuff. We're trying to do it right this time. Um, I think it's a good time. So if you're interested, I will leave the link down below for that. Okay, getting into the games then. I kept a list of games I finished this year. This year has been a year of RPGs really and finishing old games that I never finished before. Uh, also platform games. Starting off, the first game I played this year is Panzer Paladin back in January. Now, I love this game. I really did. It's an homage to old 8-bit platformers. It takes inspiration from some of the best. You'll see elements of Mega Man and Castlevania, Blaster Master, just to name a few. It takes elements from all these and then it also really creates something sort of original on its own. It's got great style. It looks like an 80s anime. I could have sworn this was a Japanese game, but no, it's made by like three European guys. Super, super um, impressive and really authentic looking anime style art, has great music, and the gameplay is so satisfying as well. So he plays this character who pilots the paladin, this mech suit, and the thing is, you can hop in and out of the mech suit, a la Blaster Master, right? There are certain points of each level where you'll have to hop out so you can get through small spaces or use your grappling hook to get across things. Uh, also, if your suit takes too much damage, you'll have no other choice but to hop out. But you really want to use your suit as much as possible and not let it get to that point of being too damaged because it's so much more powerful. You got a shield that'll block projectiles and it took me a while to remember that I had a shield and make good use of it. But you can also pick up weapons from different enemies you defeat. There's a bunch of different weapons and they all have certain special abilities attached to them and they're all breakable so there's a little bit of strategy you can only hold so many weapons and they will break on you so once you use their special ability as well the item breaks you can also throw it at bad guys to do extra damage so it's a lot of thinking on your toes about how do i make best use of what i have you might want to you know use it as a weapon until it's about to break and then use the special but if it's a really good special you might need for later you might want to avoid using that weapon for a while there's a lot to it um it, it's just a really cool game i highly recommend it if you are a fan of classic platform games now there are multiple endings and I'm not gonna spoil anything but I got really upset with myself for getting the bad ending over such a trivial thing that I didn't understand so just be aware of that okay after that I caught the RPG bug and I decided to start with the classic uh, this was back in February and I picked up Dragon Quest for the Nintendo Switch this is the remake of the original Dragon Quest now we know that they're coming out with this beautiful HD 2D remake, but no, this is the one that's based on the mobile remake. It's okay. You know what? I had a fun time with it. It's like a 10 hour RPG. Yes, I used a walkthrough because I never would have figured out a lot of it and I just didn't have the patience to uh, wander across the whole world for hours and hours without knowing where I was going. But very enjoyable game. You know, it's a classic. It's one of the very first, you know, NES RPGs out there when they really set the standard and was so influential for the genre just going forward and so it has updated artwork and of course not too long after I finished that game Akira Toriyama passed away and uh, man that was heartbreaking uh, let me just say that and I was just enjoying this seminal work from him and all his monster designs in this game all the character designs the artwork and um man yeah that sucks man 
<laughs> what, what can I say? What can I say that hasn't been said? Uh, I can go on a little, uh, go on a little side discussion here because I think it's, it's due, you know, I mean, for me, Akira Toriyama, he, he's what got me into anime and manga and just Japanese art and Japanese culture, Japanese games. Um, I became obsessed with Japan and all of its, you know, pop culture stuff as a kid. Shortly after I saw Dragon Ball Z on TV, I became obsessed, man. I had a different Dragon Ball Z t-shirt to wear every day of the week. Um, yeah, it, it, it had such a big impact on me and, um, it was my gateway into all of that. And I still dream of going to Japan one day and I still watch a bunch of anime and I'm still into all this stuff. Yeah. And it all started with Akira Toriyama and, uh, and Dragon Ball and man, rest in peace, Toriyama-san. You will be missed. You are loved by the whole world. And I'm just one person, but it can't be overstated the impact that the Dragon Ball Z had on the Western world, you know, and that just really opened up the United States and other countries to this thing called anime. And, uh, you know, not only that, but again, Dragon Quest was such a pivotal game and a defining game in the RPG genre. And, and how many other games do we see now? Just masterpieces inspired by that game. And that series is still going strong. Of course, we've seen Toriyama's designs in all of those games over the decades and many, many other video games. Of course, you know, Chrono Trigger is an all-time classic. I can't call it a timeless classic. There's my dad joke for the day because, you know, it's all about time. Yeah, man, Toriyama-san, he's just had such a huge impact on the world as we know it. He's just, yeah, his work has really meant so much to so many people worldwide. And um, I wish I wasn't talking about this because man, he's gone too soon, gone too soon, but uh, he will never be forgotten. That's for sure. All right, after Dragon Quest, I gotta pull myself together a bit here and get back on track. Um, I finally played Live Alive. This was a game I had been meaning to play for a while. I thought it looked so awesome when the remake came out. And you know what? It was cool. It had its moments, but I think I was a little disappointed. It just didn't have the impact I expected it to have on me. Um, I really enjoyed aspects of it, the art style, the creativity, just how different it is and how you play as all these different characters and how their stories all somehow come together at one point or another. I was surprised that, you know, it's not just the different people and the different stories you're playing through but the the game changes drastically in some of these like the way the game plays is super different like there's the martial arts tournament where it's super short and it's just all combat and you're just fighting in a tournament there's no exploration there's nothing and then you have the you know the future one where it feels like you're in the movie alien the first alien movie you know you're on board this ship and people are winding up dead one by one and there's a monster on the loose and it almost plays like a survival horror game uh i, I don't want to say too much but each game within the game is so very different from one another there's a lot of humor which i enjoyed the prehistoric one that one really impressed me in the fact that there's no dialogue have you ever played an RPG with no dialogue yet? It says so much without saying anything. It's really impressive. The emotions and the ideas that they're able to convey with no text, with these like 16 bit graphics, very impressive. I gotta commend them for that. There's the near future one that is just full of like pop culture references and it's got giant mechs and all this cool stuff. Um, there's a lot to love about this game and I, you know, I loved so much of it, but overall I, 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 I just liked it. I didn't love it. I just liked it. I was ready to be done with it by the end and I got the bad ending once again because I didn't understand and I missed something and um, yeah, so I got a really... I got two different bad endings and one of them was hilarious. The other one was just like disappointing, disappointed in myself. And I'm like, I'm not going to go back through this a third time. Forget it. I'm done. Anyways, Live Alive, it's cool. It's not spectacular, but there was a lot in it that was spectacular. You know, they, they talk about things that are greater than the sum of their parts. I feel like the individual parts were at times greater than the overall picture. That's what I'm somehow trying to say, but I don't know if I'm saying it right. Anyways, moving on. All right, so by this time, I just came off two different old school RPGs and I'm like, I want to play more RPGs. 
So I'm looking through my library and I'm thinking about this game I started two years prior and I never finished it. I got far into it. I always wanted to finish it, but I'm like, can you really jump back into the middle of an RPG after years without remembering anything? Yes, and actually I owe it to this YouTube channel. I'm going to put it up on the screen because this quickly got me back up to speed, helped me remember what was going on. And uh, yeah, I'm talking about The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, the first chapter. I was like 20 hours into it and then I stopped playing for whatever reason, came back to it and just like fell in love with this thing. The story, the characters, it's all very well written, very charming. And yeah, it's an old school RPG. It's not like other people haven't talked about this game to death already, but the story follows Estelle and Joshua Bright. They're sort of siblings, if you will. They're training to become bracers, which are kind of like they help defend the kingdom from various threats. The story is very, very complex and very lengthy, and I'm not going to go too deep into it. Um, it gets political. There's a lot of plot twists. You see characters you think are good and then they're bad. There are characters you think are bad and then later they're good. And there's a lot going on a lot going on yeah but at its core it's a traditional turn-based rpg you know you, there's a lot of exploration a lot of dialogue turn-based battles where you know it, there's a little bit more strategy involved than the typical turn-based rpg it's not a strategy rpg but you can move your characters around on this grid to position them in different ways and Again, not getting too involved in the details of this thing, but it is a great game. I don't know why I stopped playing it the first time. I got absolutely hooked when I picked it back up and I couldn't wait to dig into the second chapter because it ends on such a cliffhanger, man. The first chapter ends off leaving you in such suspense, but I was feeling a little too cheap to pay full price for the second chapter. So I waited and I played a different game. I decided to dive back into another RPG that I had sort of left off on halfway through once again. Always meant to go back, but again, I was like, how am I going to get caught up? And then I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to see if that YouTube channel has a video on it. And sure enough, they did. I'm talking about Tales of Symphonia a classic much beloved rpg from the gamecube it's been remastered and ported to you know new systems i played it on pc it's been on pc forever and again i really enjoyed getting back into this game and finishing it seeing the ending it was very satisfying i do feel like this is a game that overstays its welcome a little bit i think it's like 50 hours much like trails in the sky those are some super long games too yeah, I just felt like there were times when I was like, dude, I, I just, I want to be done with this already, but darn it, I want to see the ending. And I love the characters, I love the story, it's all very interesting. It has to do with these two worlds, and they're kind of hidden from each other, but they're essentially fighting for survival. And so our heroes are kind of on this journey to save both planets if they can. The story is complex and political, it has to do with slavery and human sacrifices and just you know dogmatism and corruption all kinds of stuff it is really a cool story and it's just got some really charming characters and humorous moments on top of all this dark serious stuff satisfying combat system it's a lot of button mashing but there's more to it you can command your party to do different you know spells and abilities and strategize different ways but it's all real-time action if you have some extra controllers lying around you can have your buddies come in and help you through the battles which is pretty interesting a lot of tales games have that that feature yeah it's a classic for a reason it's actually the only tales game I've played so far. I have most of them on Steam, so I plan on getting around to the rest eventually. Super glad I finished it though. I'm looking forward to, I guess Vesperia is probably the next one I'll try out. Anyways, all right, after all these four RPGs in a row, man, I decided I need a break. Back to the platformers. And I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I decided I wanted to play and finish some of the old Mega Man games. I was going to go through all of them in order. Um, you know, I feel like I want to do a full video about the Mega Man series one of these days because I have sort of a, a weird history with it. Maybe some hot takes in here as well. But yeah, I played through Mega Man 1, 2, 3, and 4 and I used a ton of save states. So I'm not really too proud of myself, but at least I got to see all that these games have to offer and there's no way I would have done this. No way I would have finished those games legitimately, you know, back in the 80s or 90s. Heck no. But more on that another day after that. 
I went back to an RPG, a strategy RPG. Fire Emblem Engage, this was another one I had started last year. Never finished it, I actually sold the game and then bought it back when it was on sale because I really enjoyed it. It's my first Fire Emblem game I've finished thanks to the sort of easier mode where you don't have permadeath. Yes, it makes it a little too easy at times, but there's still a good challenge to it. You know, I still try my best not to let my units die, even though it, you don't feel the same consequence that you normally do in other Fire Emblem games. And I've played a few of them, I just never finished them because I'm no good, I'm not that smart or strategic, I'm just not. But this game is very cool, it's very flashy, it has a lot of fanfare, a lot of fan service uh, in every sense of the word, but uh, what I mean is it has elements and characters from all these old Fire Emblem games. You have Marth, you have Roy, you have Leaf, you have Ike, you have all these classic characters and they all look so cool in this, you know, these modern style graphics and yeah, the story can be a little cheesy. I switched it over to Japanese because to me it's a little more easy to listen to that way than, than the English dub, but you know what? I, I just enjoyed it, man. I just enjoyed it. Got this hub world you can go to. You can collect resources and upgrade your stuff. You can kind of build relationships with different characters. There's a lot to this game and I just really like the characters. I built my team of all, all women and uh, it was fun. Yeah, super fun game. If you are new to the series or if you're no good at strategy games, start with this one because it's very forgiving. Play on that easier mode. You'll have a good time for sure. Finally, after all that, I got back around to Trails in the Sky for the second chapter. You know, it was more of what I liked about the first game. It is a natural continuation. It feels like just more of the first game, but you have more characters this time around. You know, you're introduced to new people. The story gets even crazier at times. Again, more characters that just keep you guessing. You don't know whose side they're on. And yeah, this one's longer than the first game. And yeah, maybe it might have overstayed its welcome just a little bit, but maybe I was just having RPG fatigue at this time because that's a lot of RPGs, man. But you know what? I love the game and I am surely gonna play the third chapter. You already know. Okay, <laughs> that's about it. Otherwise, I did play some multiplayer games throughout the year here and there. Really was enjoying Splitgate and I want to make a whole video on Splitgate too. Uh, just so you know, the game's still alive and well in 2024 and I think that's what the video is going to be called. Splitgate is alive and well in 2024. If I get around to making it a uh, super fun game. I didn't know about it at first. I slept on it for years, but uh, yeah, check it out. It's crossplay, so it's still got a good community, strong community, easy to find games good stuff. It feels like Halo meets Portal and um, lightweight game. Doesn't take up a lot of hard drive space. It's fun to jump into quickly and play some matches and it's free and you can unlock stuff for free too. So it's, it's pretty cool, man. Underrated for sure. Otherwise I watched my daughter play through all the uh, modern warfare reboot campaigns that was pretty fun i played some of the missions with her but i pretty much watched her play most of them you know it's funny because i've played some of the cod games over the years and i always just jump into the multiplayer i had no interest in the stories but these stories are actually pretty good and it was fun watching my kid play them yeah for the most part though i, I enjoy the multiplayer i know cod is a contentious subject these days you got people who love it and people who hate it and the people who hate it are just so, so vocal about it. And besides that, I co-opted Halo, the first one on the Master Chief Collection with my buddy Steve. We didn't record it, but uh, that was a good time, man. I talked about Halo before. Maybe I'll do another video on just on Halo and its significance to me. We'll see. But anyways, last game I will mention, but I do need to make a separate video on this because I promised I would months ago and I feel terrible because it came out months ago, the game, and I was just in no place to make a video for it. And that's Seven Skies to Paradise. I already did a preview of the game based on the demo. This is an indie gem, very artistic game, very beautiful, made by just mostly by one person. He got a second person to do the music. For the most part, it was like one person who did all the coding and all the artwork. And you can really feel that there was a lot of passion poured into this and it's only a few bucks on steam so go support indie devs guys feel like i need to put that on a t-shirt support indie devs yeah check it out video coming soon that's about it though like i say i have some more videos in the works i have this controller i've been meaning to review i, I have had it for months and i have not opened it 
because I want to review it and I don't see any other reviews for it on YouTube. So that's going to be coming soon. I still want to do, I have too many ideas to a little time. So just thanks again to everybody for all the support, all the love over the years. I think this channel is like five years old now. That is a trip. This channel will be five years old on July 28th, 2019. I uploaded the first video and man, it's been quite the ride. I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of cringy content. And I just want to thank everybody for the love and support. Everybody who's stuck around or if you're new here and um, you left me a kind comment on a video, that means a lot to me. Uh, if you're one of the OGs who have been, I, I consider some of you my friend at this point. Even if I never met you in person, I've uh, met some really cool people on here and um, yeah, I hope I can stick around and, and see you guys more often on here. Um, right now, my priority is shifting over to the Hard Shotters channel for many reasons, but um, I'll still be uploading here whenever I can. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm just going to ramble on forever, so I'm going to end it here. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. I will see you soon. I'm really excited to get started on this. Will I be able to make all these videos consistently every week? Realistically not. So be sure to hit that subscribe button now so you can be the first to know when these videos come out. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the videos. Welcome to the channel. I'll see you real soon.